I wanted to make a quick video about style components, a thing that I've been using lately with my React development, which I do quite a bit of, and I know a lot of people haven't heard about this library, so I wanted to shed a little light on it. Unfortunately, style components is specific to React and React Native, so if you don't work with either of those tools, then you won't be able to use style components. The main purpose of style components in a nutshell is to take CSS and embed it as part of your React component. And this means taking the CSS and inserting it into JavaScript. I'm going to demonstrate exactly how style components work shortly, but first I want to take you back through the, the history of CSS and why style components is kind of what I think the end state for CSS and JavaScript composition, especially in the component age. So back before there was less or SAS or SCSS, there was only CSS, cascading style sheets. You would compose all of your styles into a file that ended with a .css extension. You would include them into your HTML and then they would style your HTML from there. CSS has of course been used forever, but it does have some downsides and some can create some pretty big problems in your program. For example, consider this file sample.css and say you had a tag that had a class called title. So you do title and you specify something like a larger font size. The problem with doing styles like this is if you include this into your master CSS file that's included on every HTML page that you're going to serve to the user, it means that any component or button or div or anything like that that has the class title will receive font size 20 pixels. So what happens if you then use a friend framework such as Bootstrap or Foundation and they want to also use the title class? You now have a conflict and it'll be up to CSS rules as to which is applied. Now this may not be a big deal for small projects. You simply resolve the conflict and change your own class name and then change any references to where that class is used and then everything is fine. But on big projects with multiple developers and style sheets that are thousands of lines long, this can become a pretty huge issue to the point where you never actually know where the style is coming from. So then came less SCSS and SAS, and this kind of made CSS a lot better to work with, and it kind of resolved the issue with overlapping styles. So with less, if you had a div called my div, and then you had a h6 that had a title class, you could do something like dot my div, and then you could insert title inside my div, and then this would only apply the style here for font size to a component that had the title class that was a child of my div. So although this does resolve accidental style overlap, it only does that if everything in the project is using something like less. If one thing is not, then that might still override yours. It's probably worth mentioning that until about three months ago, this is more or less how I did CSS in my projects. I would use less. I would have a root class that would also be at the first element in my components, and then that's the way I would style those particular things. However, this was prone to spelling errors, reference errors. It was more maintenance because if I wanted to move things around in the component, then they would get messed up. And then finally, I still had to manage separate less files, and you know that was more maintenance as well. So now we finally arrived at the meat of this video, which is style components, which I believe is the solution to all of these problems. So what you're looking at here is going to be code that I'll include in the description of this video, and it is just a create React app default install of a React application, and I'm just working from there. On the right side is the live server that will update as I update the, uh, the code here. So I'm gonna make a very basic style component. My goal is to style this div here and give it, say, a padding of 15. So I'll create a new component, something like container equals styled.div and then backticks. And these backticks are something called tagged template literals. I'll explain shortly why these are important. And then within the backticks, we simply do our style just like we would in CSS. So padding, 15 pixels, semicolon, that's it. So now instead of having div with hello world in it, I'll copy container, I'll replace the two divs with container, save, and you can see now I have padding here. So now I'm going to make another style component, but this time it's just a button. I'll call it something like styled button equals styled.button. Use backticks, and then in here I'm just going to give it some random stuff. We'll say like font size 18 pixels, font weight bold. So to use the styled button, we'll use it just like you'd use any other button. So create a new component here, and then put the text, your text here. And we save it, you can see that we get a button that can be clicked. So now I'm gonna show you something really powerful about style components. So what if we wanted to reuse this button, make it a second time, but I wanna put a property here of red, and I want that to make the text of the button red. How would I do that with style components? 
And this is where it's gonna become clear why tag template literals are important. Because a template allows us to insert arbitrary expressions in here, one thing we can do is we can get access to the props of the actual button. So we can create a function like this, and we can say props.red, so this will be like, you know, is the prop red there, and and, CSS, the new temperate literal, and then here we can conditionally apply a red color. So now you can see when it gets saved, I have a red button and a black button. The last powerful feature of style components I want to show you is its ability to inherit properties from a different component. Now bear in mind, this is just a couple of really powerful features. Style components has a ton. These are just the couple that I'm going to show for this video. So you'll note for the first two components that I made, I did style.div and style.button. And this references the built-in HTML divs and buttons. But what if we want to style an existing component? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new component that's going to inherit from styled button and just add padding. So what I'll do is make a new component. We'll do like styled button with padding. I'll just make it long just to be descriptive. Equals styled parentheses. Put styled button in there and then use the same template literals as before. And then now in this button, I'll just give it some padding. So just like 10 pixels. I'll copy my component name, scroll down, add a new component here. Just put with padding so you can see it. You can see now, I know it's hard to see, but there is additional padding with this button. I made the screen a little bit wider just so you can clearly see it. And then as you can probably already imagine, if I were to copy this button and then add red to the end and then save it, you can see now I get a with padding with red text. So everything gets inherited to include the expression that uses the prop red. Now the last thing I want to show you is that all these components here to include the container, if you look at the class names, you can see that they're very random. And this is something that style components does for you automatically. And this is what guarantees you that there will never be a class conflict. And that's pretty much it for the video. Here again, this wasn't intended to be an exhaustive tutorial on style components, of course, because there's a lot to style components, but hopefully you can see the power and the value in this. And if you're not already using it for your React or React Native application, perhaps you might want to check it out. I will say that going forward, this is absolutely the library that I'm going to keep using for React and React Native stuff. I'll leave a link in the description to the contents of all the code, as well as a link to the style components website if you wanted to check it out. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, be sure to leave those below in the comments. And if you're already somebody who's using style components, let me know below in the comments how your experience has been so far with it. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.